Howdy everybody, Brian here from quantlabs.net. Uh, <clears throat> okay, welcome to this YouTube stream. Uh, we are dealing with, uh, give me a second here. Hmm. I'm going to answer this guys and then get off of YouTube. Okay, sorry about that. Okay, so... I'm going to bring up the soup, the chat stuff on YouTube. We are, of course, recording. So today is 7 p.m. We are talking about all of the available, um, all of the available options and how the bot's been doing and all that fun stuff. So I got my chat. If you got questions, I don't know how many people are watching. Um, okay, so let's talk about some of the fun stuff that we've been um, witnessing here. Um, let me go over to the Instagram. I've been posting these on all social media. It just seems to be more effective than uh, before. So uh, since, uh, well, it's been overall, well, let me first uh, mention this. Go over to the website, quantlabs.net, um, anywhere, quantlabs.net, you can get the track record of the system uh, every 24 hours. So when you come into uh, this button here called track record, uh, this will uh, give you uh, 10 days worth of all of the available um, data of how this bot's been doing. Yesterday was probably the highest I've seen it. Uh, it's like 29.5% on a Sunday and, uh, oh, awesome. Everybody's coming in. Great. Welcome. Uh, like I said, yesterday was an awesome day. It was 29 and a half percent. Uh, could I ask for anything better? No, but, um, if you got any questions, this is what we're doing. This is for you guys. If you guys got any questions, please, uh, type them in, in the chat. I've got my little chat open. Um, so what I want to show you is that we've got the 10 days worth right here of um, all the records. So I'm just going to pull up on another system. So let me, let me, before we start, I'm going to let you know, I'm looking at the um, bot. It's up 12.93%. Uh, actually, sorry, 13.7% now. Uh, I'll give you the rundown of how the markets are looking right now. So we'll, we'll do these live. Today's been a very strong day in crypto. Um, if you're not trading crypto, I think you're missing out on probably the opportunity of a lifetime here. Right now, this is what we've got uh, on moves over the last hour with the big five that I track. Bitcoin against USD is um, 80, 0.83. Uh, Ethereum USD is 1.11. Ethereum Classic is 3.35% in the last hour. Um, Hey, Colin, how you doing? Uh, and I think it's Andrew, eh? And then Litecoin uh, US against USD is 3.1%. Uh, Bitcoin Cash against USD is about 2.48. That's right now, uh, or in the last hour. So the market's been on fire for the last while. And um, I got to tell you, it's very exciting to see this because I haven't seen these. I don't think I've seen these strong numbers before ever on uh Crypto, since I've been looking at it for the last six months, call it, but the, the strategy I've been running on the bot has been now two months, just over two months. So these are strong days, and I think a lot of it has to do with the legitimizing of crypto as SEC is now going to go legit on uh, the ETFs for Bitcoin. The Where it started was when GP, JP Morgan introduced, uh, they said they're, they're, they're bringing out the new um, – their own uh, crypto coin. And that's when things started to take off. So it just totally legitimizes crypto as an asset class. And that's why I think we're starting to see the big moves. Okay, so as I said, if you got questions, just type them in the chat. Um, we've got uh, Colin who asked, talk about live chats. Are you going to show how to do this with Python? I'll kind of touch on it, um, Colin. If you got anything specific, let me know. Do your courses teach uh, creating bots with your algorithm or more of a guide? Okay, why don't, why don't I go over to the um, to, to the store? Okay, so if you want to know about the um, track record of this thing, 
just as I said, coming in a track record, okay? So that's what we got. Um, as I said, right now, my bot uh, is currently, since midnight last night, is trading at 13.7, 101 positions have been put on since midnight, okay? So let me talk about, um, this, is, this is live, this is live, this is in the last hour. All right, so um, let me go over to the store and, sh and give you an outline of how this course works. Um, if you notice on the overlay, I put you snooze, you lose. I put up the price uh, as of uh, this morning. Um, so right now, that's the per month, um, and this is now the new price right there. So if I go into the um, course, I'll go over the outline. And um, hey, Gil, also hello, how can I get the bot, how much it costs? Okay. Let's talk about this. It's not a bot that I'm selling. I don't sell the software. I have tried to put it out there for trading signals, and the problem was nobody bought it. <laughs> so now all of a sudden everybody wants it. Um, the signaling that I, it was really just signaling that I was providing minute by minute. That's why I call this a strategy minute by minute because it's what I'm trading on minute time frame. Um, so right now the um, what I do is. I try to discourage people from uh, trading and, and using cr uh, crutches. So I, I like to prefer to get people to build these things on their own. There's two options, I, and I do realize most people don't have the coding skills. So this is this is the outline. If you click on this uh, top here, I'm going to walk you through what it is. So um, this is the answer um, uh, A to cases K. Uh, question about is it a guide or is it an actual bot it's both um, it's a guide to show you how to build bots like this for any asset class so what it is it's different um uh and, and i think somebody else think like gil osala asked about the price so this just went up this morning 11.97 for the course i've done a live six week um overview it's so it's fully up to date with all the all the hints of how my particular bot works so this is the outline i got all pile up a bunch of videos but it's a um a 12 modules oh okay hey uh, al okay we'll call you al no problem all right so um what we've got here this is the outline of the course so this is a course on how to build similar bots but it's more as you can tell by the name this is called um, infrastructure building block with crypto. So I do put a, a major focus on crypto because I've done a lot of analysis on different asset classes. And I can tell you that crypto is the way uh, due to the fact that there's no leverage involved. Now with Binance as well, it's a pretty well the largest exchange in the world, probably the largest, most honest strategy as well. Um, so I'll just go over the course. I'm hopefully going to answer some of these questions. So right now, um, if you're new to programming, I cover that uh, in an overview, why Python. Uh, number two, uh, we cover Python tools and methodology. Um, and then uh, number three, uh, I talk about how to wrangle the market data. So how it sh shows you how to download the Binance uh, data, how to wrangle it, manipulate it for your needs. It can be at any time frame, uh, minute. 15 minute, five minute, hourly, four hour, daily, whatever you want. Um, so I show you that. Um, and that's important because if you want to do really well, like this bot's doing, um, it, it, it is easily um, 100 to 200 positions a day in a 24 hour period. And that's because it's, it's only focusing and trading on one minute data, which means it magnifies the opportunities by 60, you know, because it's a minute versus let's say just trading on an hourly. So that's why I like working on uh, minute by minute data. So <laughs> then the other thing is I show different options for different brokers. So I show different examples of how to use um, OANDA data, where to get the resources and stuff and how to read these types of files. Uh, if it's a CSV file, comma separated value, or if it's an Excel format, you can do that. Um, so I show you examples of that. There's tons of videos, code samples in each of these modules. And then the fifth module, this is optional. And this can kind of confuse people. Is it the Redis database uh, as an option? It just enables you to store data 
Um, and I just showed different examples of how to use it. Uh, if it's for pricing, like a watch list or a position manager, this is all stored in the um, in the database. And Redis is true open source. It's pretty fast as well. Um, I'll get to the questions in a minute. Just hopefully, this will answer a lot of people. Um, and then the sixth part, uh, sorry, the sixth section here is this is the meat of it is the technical analysis using a, a package called um, TA Lib. And there's over 300 um, examples of how to use it. But some people ask me, how, how do I uh, do entries? Uh, I'm using a combination of harmonics and candlesticks. And I've got a blog posting that shows you how to um, basically uh, use reliable um, uh, candlesticks. So you can go to the, the website here. It's called the uh, Pattern Site. And there's a whole study on how this works and which candles. You, you get a good chunk of them um, over um, with this uh, for using TA Lips. So I cover that in this module and how to use it with the data. And then from there, um, I show charting. Uh, there's a package I like called Chart Director. It's commercial. Um, and then next module we cover is CCXT, which is the package in Python that enables you to talk to over, and I'll show it to you. Um, it enables you to talk to over 130 different exchanges, crypto exchanges, in one wrapper. That's the beauty of it. So it's it, it supports JavaScript, PHP, and Python. But obviously I focus on Python. This is another key ingredient of the success because I'm using Binance with this. And I can easily rip this out. I shouldn't say easily, but I can easily, much easier than starting from scratch with another exchange like OKX, which is the second biggest uh, exchange out there. So that's what this covers, CCXT. Um, then we have a little bit mentioning about funding a, uh, a cryptocurrency account, including Ledger. Um, and then we cover all the different bonus material. Like, it is a lot. It's, 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 I don't know how many hours this thing has, this video, uh, the, the entire course has, but it's a lot. Um, and uh, obviously part of that includes a private uh, chat server that I've built um, in the last uh, six weeks again. Um, and it's private, it's anonymous. There's no third parties tracking you at all. So that's basically the course, and that enables you to build bots like what I've got. Probably even better, I've got one guy who's testing the TA lib, <clears throat> and he's building his own trading ideas. So he's got the idea of how this course works. So that's that. Um, so let me get to the questions. Okay. So um, so let me start with Al's question. Do, you, do your courses teach creating bots with your algorithm or more of a guide? So I'm hoping that answers the question. Now, in terms of what I show in this course with the current bot that's working, I've got replay videos over the last six weeks, two months actually, two months, about close to two months worth, <clears throat> actually I think it's 11, 11 or 12 videos of, of playbacks and I drop hints in each of those videos of the indicators I'm using uh, to get the successes that I'm getting. And um, that's how I, I do it because as I said, I'm trying to get people to move off of just relying on a crutch or a black box because the thing will blow up eventually. I don't think, I think this bot is going to work for a long time. I would have thought it would have died, the performance would have died off uh, in, the, in, in, in the last few weeks because it's been going since mid-December, but it's getting better. I mean, a 29.5% uh, performance uh, in 24 hours is amazing. And then right now, as I said at the beginning of the stream, we're at 13.7 since midnight. That's how the total returns uh, that we're at. Okay, so Gil asked, Hello, how can I get the bot? How much? So hopefully I've answered that already. All you got to do is just come into the store and look for this course right here, Python Algo Infrastructure with Cryptocurrency. Uh, and as I said, it's uh, 11.97 right now. Okay, I'm going to have a cheaper version, but it's a Python 2. And it's very dated, but uh, it's just a, it'd be a affordable gateway to test yourself to see if you want to go the further, uh, more advanced uh, with this other course. So hopefully I'll answer. Okay, so we got Collins. In my opinion, if you have the exact algorithm working on the market in the exact way, I think it will ha affect the ability to make profits eventually. 
as the use of the algorithm grows. You know, Colin, I would have think so, but here, let me show you coin market cap. This algo that works, um, I don't think it'll grow. I don't think it'll ever have um, the potential to move markets. Um, if I showed you the actual um, currency pairs or crypt coin pairs that it, that it trades, um, they're big. I mean, they're hard to move. Uh, it's involving Litecoin is a big one. Uh, Bitcoin Cash is another one. You're, you're dealing with over $2 billion a day. Or sorry, that's a market cap, but... The volume, it, it, it's very difficult to do that. Um, and it's, 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 not, it's about timing the opportunity that comes along. And it's all built on a combination of, of momentum and volume. It's very simple. So um, I don't think it will affect the markets. And it only deals with, like today it started trading this one, this Bitcoin SV. Not a lot, but it's 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 able to uh, pick up these trades. Uh, another one that was picked up today on Binance, because this is the as I said the exchange I use. One of the ways to track what it will trade, and you can think you may get the timing down. It's very hard because part of this what this bot will do it will not trade um, it will not trade highly volatile pairs. So certain pairs like Bitcoin. Is good, but it's highly volatile, so it won't trade it. But when you look at these markets in Binance, you have BNB, you don't touch those. BTC, there's not a lot of performance I'm getting with it unless it's with Ethereum against Bitcoin. And then there's the alt markets. This is where we're doing really good. So if you go in there and you look at the volume, what you'll notice here, this is a new one that they added about a month ago, TRX XRP. I'm starting to notice more of these, and I'm waiting for the day when... Um, Binance goes full in uh, using XRP or Ripple as the base base coin because there's this battle between Ethereum and XRP as a base uh, coin now. Um, it's not Bitcoin. It's either right now it's Ethereum, but there's also XRP as the base coin. So that's the thing. My thing's picking up and also Binance coin. It, it picks up a lot as well. So a lot of the ones I'm seeing are have a lot of volume, but they're not volatile, okay? And I track those over a certain period of time because what I've seen in the markets is when a pair goes volatile, it's going to be volatile for about eight hours, and it'll settle down. My, my bot won't trade those. Why? Because those become whipsaws, and when they become whipsaws, you put on a random position, it's going to go against you. And that was the most frustrating uh, thing that I've noticed on uh, – any trading and, and forex is even worse than than um, this one with uh, crypto. So I'm hoping I answer that question. Okay, so um, okay, let me see here. So I make sure I'm getting all these. So Colin asked, "In my okay, so I've answered that question from Colin. Are these level two quotes? What's the cost of the service? Everything I'm showing you right now are just raw data that you get with out of Binance using CCXT. Okay." This is all free stuff. So in here, um, there's example code that you can use to download data right from Binance. There's no extra fees for it. You just fund the account, $10, $20, whatever you want. US doesn't matter the amount. There's no minimum. And you get access to um, the full API. The only difference is the fees if you have a larger account. And now you have to, you, you can't file uh, or, or apply for an account anonymously anymore. Like you have to. Uh, do the KYC know your customer business. So uh, when, when you provide that, you get better access into the API and it becomes cheaper. So, and um, it also affects your trading capabilities as well. Um, so let me see. Uh, so that's all free. So there's no level two quote. Um, I think you can get level two equivalent on using CCXT, but um, I've, I've used different examples of bid and asks where you can see um, if, 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 if a pair will, will um, go up or down because of the bid and ask. So I've done some analysis with that, and, and there is potential there, but you're using Python. So remember that. You're going to have some limitations there on the speed. Um, so hopefully I've answered that question. Okay, so yeah, I'm doing Redis. Uh, He's going to show you how to make a bot, not the bot itself that he uses. Yeah, thanks, Colin. So what I'm doing is I'm showing you 
the the infrastructure. I'm kind of like giving you the map on how to do something, but I'm not giving you the actual instructions. I'll go from point A to point B, if that's a good example of that. Okay, so um, yeah, so that's my idea here is to show people how to build bots. And I, through the course, will show you some of the indicators I use to um, uh, basically uh, get successes like this. And as I said, I got one guy who's very active and, and he's, he's getting a lot of his own discoveries through this so-called framework, if you want to call it that. Um, Al says, I'm a novice to trading. What type of securities, options, futures, and stocks? Okay, let me talk about the different ass, asset classes like stocks, Forex. I will tell you I've done a video, I've done the analysis on Forex, retail Forex like using a broker like Owando or FXCM or whoever. The problem is um, if you want to get 10 times return equivalent to what you get here on a 10% on a return overall for the day, you have to put on leverage. And if those trades and the leverage goes against you, you're going to lose a ton of money. And the the... the the potential of losing money is, is is pretty high if you use leverage. In the world of crypto, you don't have to worry about leverage because the swings are so extreme. As I said, right now, let me let me go back into the um, into the uh, refresh my uh, big market right now. Okay, so everything's come off now. Okay, now um, it's all negative all of a sudden with after the stream. So it was up three percent or two percent or one percent. Those are big moves over an hour. But if you look at the world of crypto, you might get, if you're lucky, I can I can actually take a look at it. Um, no, Forex right now is not a good time to get in, it looks like. Um, yeah, Forex is dead, but I'm looking at CFDs. Um, right now, the biggest I'm getting is a US 2000 at 0.01%. So in order to get uh, even a 1% move on something like that, you would have to put on leverage of 100 to get the same kind of return on a conservative move in crypto. So that's why crypto is really good and it's very low risk. The cost of um, crypto is very, very low. Uh, it's 0.1%. The problem with Forex or any of these other brokers, they can manipulate your orders. When you put a stop loss on, they can manipulate the orders. Um, and that's part of the problem. Um, here, you're, you're, you're managing your own uh, virtual uh, stop losses and take profit, and it's within your system. So you're not signaling back to, to the exchange saying, here's my stop loss, here's my, um, here's my uh, take profit. Because once you signal back to a broker in exchange, they know how you want to trade, and they'll prematurely knock you out and blame it on things like technology or something. You know, I get that a lot. So that's with Forex. CFD is the same. In terms of uh, stocks, the problem with stocks, um, they're not bad. But again, it's high risk because it's like picking, uh, basically, it's just throwing things at a, at a dart. And a lot of the professional traders that I know don't trade direct stock unless it's a big one like an Apple or a Tesla or a, like a large, large, um, large cap, basically. In terms of um, stocks and options, Options are okay, and I plan to get into that in a year, but futures are very slow moving. So hopefully I've answered those questions for you. Question from Colin, are you shorting in your algo? Okay, I'll answer that. That's pretty easy. You advise this in this way you make as the coin goes up and down. Okay, when you go into the world of Binance, you can't short. You can only long. Okay, that you can only long. The only um, exchange that I know of that allows... Let me go over to Bitcoin uh, to uh, the um, exchanges here on coin on um, cryptocurrency. What's it called uh, CoinMarket.cap. So I'll pull up the uh, exchanges here. Uh, let me just put up the adjusted volume here. So these are the exchanges by volume. These are adjusted, meaning that the these guys at CoinMarketCap have done their own uh, adjusting because a lot of the uh, uh, broker or exchanges do put out inflated volumes to make themselves look better. Um, so they so coin market cap will adjust it to their own to their own using their own algorithms. Here you can see the order by volume um, for the for the for the exchanges. 
The only one you can short on, as far as I know, is all the way down here somewhere, Bittrex or something. One thing I can tell you, a lot of these brokers, let's say just the top three, Binance, OKX, and DigiFinance, Finex, they're based out of Asia. A lot of the volume is, even when Bitcoin was dead, and it kind of is coming back now, it's all that volume is driven out of Asia. So a lot of the big exchanges are based out of Asia. So um, Bittrex is a, is a um, exchange, I believe, out of the U.S., but the problem was, there wasn't a lot of volume coming to the U.S., but Bittrex or what? I, I don't know. I can't remember which one it is, but that's the only one that I know uh, that shorts. Um, but, uh, uh, you know, you can't even – it's not even uh, registering here uh, as on the exchanges. So it's just longing only. So hopefully I've um, answered that question for you all. Uh, so let me see here. Are you shorting? So Gil asks. So you sell a course for programming your your our, our self a bot and determine uh determine one one uh, yeah yeah well let me answer it another way yes it's a it's a it's a it's a it's a course to show you how to build bots and then from there uh, using uh the library I showed you the package for Python CCXT and TALib you'll have enough tools and indicators that you'll have access to to fool around to build your own trading bot. So hopefully that'll answer that question. I'll ask, therefore, your bot is turning on your OpenBSD box. I created a backtesting algorithm on Java with, with Stockbroker, but we use closed stock data from Yahoo Finance. That's from Al. Okay. Um, currently, my system that I'm running right now, uh, you may have seen it, is on Ubuntu Linux. Okay. I've not had any, any issues with it. I will not put it on Windows. I will not put it on... Um, on uh, Apple Mac OS, just because I don't trust either of the vendors. Uh, Ubuntu is not bad for Linux, um, and uh, it's it's uh, pretty good. Um, but I, my end target will be OpenBSD. But here's the problem: if I decide to travel, like I was up in Ottawa about a week ago um, for three days, and I had to leave my home computer on. Uh, to keep the thing running. So I'm looking at uh, either cloud, like Amazon or Google, or um, running it through a virtual private server through like a hosting provider. So I may go with the hosting provider um, because they enable me to have Python. So that's the option I'm looking at to put all the scripts, the Python scripts on a VPS environment. That's what I'm looking at. <clears throat> um, so I'm hoping I answered that question. Uh, I mean, I just want to make sure, uh, are you selling the course and fully? Okay. So that comes back to the question about open BSD. Ultimately, I want to be on open BSD, but obviously whatever ISP or sorry, um, hosting provider I go with for a VPS, I'm stuck to that operating system or Linux distribution. Uh, most of the time it's going to be CentOS and I don't really care because Linux works and it really comes down to Python. It's pretty universal across all operating systems. So OpenBSD, I'd like to have it on that, but um, for traveling purposes, I have to have on a remote server somewhere, uh, like on a web a hosting provider. So that's what I'm planning to do. So OpenBSD, kind of, I don't really need as much. Uh, so you mentioned about uh, writing and back testing it. I'll go in Java, the stock market, but we use closed stock data. From Yahoo Finance, I'm not sure uh, what what level of, of, of data you used. Um, right now, uh, let me go over to my YouTube channel here. Um, I'm at some point going to move over to a platform called Motive Wave. Um, outside of uh, the bots, this thing that I've written, um, it's it's a I don't know how old this platform is. But if you come under my playlist here, uh, what you can do is um, you look for Motive Wave. Let me just find it here. Um, right here, this one. That is a new discovery I made about two, three months ago. And it's a fantastic, it's the best platform I've seen. And it supports Java. Um, so I'm going to be kind of moving on that and also be uh, using my Reddit's database as the hub. To store all the data so i'm going to be using that wait for the next big version that will support full-on crypto 
because you can't trade with crypto on Motive Wave. But I plan to move a lot into Motive Wave in Java. Plus, they have a, a killer package for harmonics, a killer package for uh, candles as well. Um, and it's really good. It's a little pricey, but for the money, I think it's worth it. Um, and it's a lifetime license. It's not renewed. I, no, I, I think there there is an initial price you pay. And you pay a very nominal fee for the annual support, which is pretty good. Um, so that's with the platform in the future I'm planning with Java. Um, so you can do all your back testing using that platform. So it takes away, and, and, and there's a really good um, if you if you ever get into into uh, into Python, there's a very good pl uh, project called Backtrader.com. And it's a full-on backtesting and now trading bot. I think everyone from Quantopia moved over to this thing in Python because it's a full-on trading platform and it's open source. So you, you get to own the source code um, for your needs. It's pretty killer. And that's at backtrader.com. Um, so I'm just putting that up if you're interested. Okay, I understand with respect to short. That's a good one, uh, Colin. Now, comment. I have seen a cloud provider supposedly selling computer resources close to the exchanges. Yeah, um, brokers do that as well. Um, I think it's a non-issue. Uh, it just depends upon how you architect your software. Um, right now, if you go through that Python course, you'll notice... Everyone says that Python's slow and it's no good and blah, 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 blah. And then you compare it to a language like Java or C++. What I found is Python's very easy to get up and running. It's much easier, light years ahead to maintain. And when you factor that all in, you're saving time on the coding front. Once you get familiar with something like when I built this framework, uh, you're able to bang out strategies very, very quickly. Um, like in a matter of hours. And I try to do that in C++. You'll be, you'll be spinning your wheels, maintaining the code, spinning the wheels to build out a framework or something similar. Uh, and it could take, I've seen people spend two years and get nowhere because of, of that methodology. And that's why I like Python because you can get things up and running. So depending upon how you architect your software, uh, namely, um, like let's say for instance, there's 400 and some odd pairs on Binance. Most people say, well, I'll download all the all the pairs on Binance. I wouldn't recommend that. I'd only focus on the ones that are moving fast and that are me meeting certain requirements for, let's say, volume for, for momentum. You're now cutting out your processing time by 95 or, or very close to 100%. Once you start cutting out all that extraneous processing you don't need to, to add, now, now, now you're enabling Python to do its job. And you're taking away all that bloat in the code as well. Um, so when you f analyze it from that perspective, Python is makes sense. And I'm not yet attacked machine learning, and that's the other big thing. With machine learning, Google, uh, the TensorFlow, everything's moving to Python. Everything, all the speed up on the on the TPUs, everything's is is being embedded with Python. And a lot of now the code that you build using something like TensorFlow or whatever framework for machine learning like PyTorch, all that extra processing won't be done on your local system. You'll be able to easily push it all onto a cloud solution and, and not worry about that. You just focus on the model building and that's how the new TensorFlow has been built. So hopefully that can give you a better perspective that Python is getting more sophisticated, not because it's getting faster, just because it's being architected in a much, much better way. Um, let me see here. Okay, so I've answered that question. So cloud cloud will be important. Um, for me right now, with my script, there's no machine learning. So as I said, I'm going to put that on a virtual private server through a web hosting provider. Okay. Let me just see here. I got a comment from Al about it was open, high, low, close. Um he also said, also recommend two books for Python in 2015 or 2016. Mastering Python, one other from a quant site. Are these books still applicable? It depends on um, the uh, the version of Python because Python 2 and 3 are vastly, I should say, they're not, there's not a lot of difference, but in terms of 
the packages themselves are, are they being updated in Python 2.7? And sometimes it's yes, sometimes it's no. But if you stick with the latest version of Python, in my case, I use Python 3.6. Um, and I haven't had any real problems with it. I know they have 3.7. Actually, we can find out. I think it's probably 3.7 that's out. And because of that, that can outdate these books. But some authors will update um, their books. Yeah, so it's 3.72 I just saw there. But I don't think you need books. But a good resource is, uh, for learning Python is um, that I've seen a lot of people make references. Uh, uh, learn, learn Python the hard way. Um, so that might be one, one resource I can recommend, uh, learn to code, uh, yeah, learn, learn, learn Python the hard way. So just Google that or, or do a search on that. Also, there's, um, Microsoft, uh, even though I can question Microsoft, but Microsoft can be good. Um, there's also a, a channel that they have called or, uh, project, or sorry, channel nine as another resource for learning Python. So let's say if you do Python channel nine, <clears throat> do a Google search on that. That's pretty good as well. Uh, resource to learn about Python online for free. And if you want to know how to do um, things like uh, building out uh, Python, um, well, actually, overall, this guy, like, he's, he's, he's a little outdated, but I still think it's very valid. Python Syntax this YouTube channel. He's got a, a tutorial on how to build out an algorithm system as well. So this, this is a great resource as well. So if you want to know how to spell it, it's S E N T D E X. And there you go. And then if you do a search, I'm sure if you, you can find uh, algorithmic trading, he's got some great tutorials there um, that I've seen and uh, I quite like. So there's three resources for free online. Um, and then obviously you got to get into the machine learning if you're going to do that too, because last week I was reading a career article. So the definition of quant is going to die and it's going to be replaced with machine learning. So that will be using, uh, another good resource for that. Machine learning is uh, a really, really good guy. Suraj Raval, uh, his channel is amazing, uh, for machine learning and he's up to date. Uh, so S I R A J R A V A L. And his stuff is amazing. Like he's got a big, big channel, 570,000 people. And he does only Python, mostly um, TensorFlow. He does algorithmic trading as well through machine learning. Very simplistic stuff, but it's a really good uh, tutorial. So hopefully I'll help you out. How does your bot compare to TD Ameritrade's Think or Swim or Tasty Trades platform? Let me add, well, you asked them, did they get ever a 29.5% return on all their trades in a day? That's the comparison we're talking about. And as I said at the beginning, uh, we are, let me just see. So last check was 13.71% since midnight. We're at now 14.02%. So it's gone up uh, a little bit uh, since we started the stream. So. That's the kind of performance we're getting. The markets are doing pretty good, 103 positions a day, minute by minute. So that's the difference between those two. Um, let's see, Colin asks, I agree, with, uh, with respect to C++. Yeah, the, the C++ on an execution level is very quick. But if you don't know how to code C++ and do it optimally, it does not mean if it's done crappily or done, as I call it, a hornet's nest, but yet you have a highly optimized Python program the Python program may actually be faster than the crappy C++. So it depends how it's coded up. Um, but C++ is definitely faster. I mean, it's a standard for very high-speed uh, trading platforms. But also remember, if you want to, to do this long-term, full-time, and be successful at it, and you don't have a lot of strong coding skills, Python's the way. Yeah, Python, Python's very expensive. Let me show you a stat here I can show you. Um, many people use different uh, rankings. So if you look at uh, TO programming languages, this is the most popular programming languages out there. So this is for February 2019, or sorry, January 2019 update. Um, and let me just show you here. I can, I can walk you through why each language. So we can just focus on the top 
five. Um, so you have Java. It's been around since the early 90s. C's been around since the 70s. And then Python. Python is number three. Um, and it's growing. Uh, C++ is dropping off. So that will show you um, that. Uh, and another thing about if you want to get nerdy with that operating system, OpenBSD, I just I didn't know this, but a few years ago, C, uh, OpenBSD, which has been around for over 20 years, was totally rewritten uh, from C++ to C because they wanted to make it more optimal and remove all what they call bloat out of the code code base with OpenBSD. So it's now written in C, not B, C++ like it was originally. Um, so yeah, so then Al says, ha, C++ write once, debug forever. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> yeah, um, meta programming. Try that. It's no. Oh. Python's not bad. Um, I don't think you can use Python for true object-oriented programming. Uh, there's talk of object-oriented. People are moving away from it now. Um, but Python, just using it as a pure scripting language, it's a really nice language. Um, but they do predict that Python will be the most popular language on the planet within uh, three years, or maybe two years now. And not only that, but Microsoft uh, recognizes this, and I see less and less talk of .NET, but I do see talk of C, C++, a little bit of Java, and definitely Python. And as machine learning comes aboard, it's all Python. It's a standard. And Al says, I was a, I was a C coder number two. I was a C coder a long time ago. <laughs> I started in the 80s. And that's how far back I go. I was a kid, but I, I, I got pretty good at C when I was just a pure ANSI in like 14. Like there was very little on the, uh, on the API. I was like nowhere as sophisticated as it is now. C++ gets way more uh, complicated. I like C++ as a language, but I prefer... Python, because it's nice to look at, and I don't get heart attacks looking at C and C++. Java, not so much. Comment. Uh, coding C++ is like writing a jet full speed, but at five feet over the land surface, yeah. And then, I don't know, I, I could probably put a comment in there about uh, a greater. <laughs> uh, yeah, C's, C's been out since the 70s. You got to remember that. That's why... Java is so prevalent in the enterprise, um, pretty like everywhere. Banks use it, insurance companies use it, government uses it. It's embedded in everything. The other big reason why Java is huge is because of Android, because Android as well, uh, the old Android is Java. And because Java, or when you look at mobile, 80% of all uh, mobile phones out there are in Android and a lot of that is Java, and that's why um, Java is up there. If that didn't happen, I think and uh, Java would have dropped off quite a bit. But C's out there because elevators are written in C. Like all the um, low-level embeddable stuff is all C, including the operating systems themselves. A lot of them, like I said, OpenBSD as an example. I think Ubuntu, a lot of Linux uh, is C. I could find out, but... Um, uh, doesn't matter. <laughs> so if you guys got any other questions, that'd be cool. Um, I think I've covered everything. Um, so right now, this, the bot's up a little bit more. Um, yeah. But uh, I'm planning to do this again in two weeks again. Um, one of the other things is I have, like I said, I've got the private chat server, so I'm pretty active on that. Um, and... Uh, uh, if you're a member, make sure you get on that. Uh, I'll show you how in the dashboards. We'll give you instruction on how to get access to that. And you have that uh, chat access for life. And there's a huge reason why I got rid of uh, the Telegram um, and all that. So I just don't like being tracked um, with sensitive conversation um, on, uh, on uh, these messengers. Like yesterday, I mentioned to somebody, Subaru. And what do I get on my Instagram is Subaru ads. So don't tell me that um, these these phones and uh, are not spyware devices. They are. Um, Colin asks, Java takes care of memory management automatically. It handles uh, leaks, etc. If you have a leaky Java project, you are 
writing really crappy code. Yeah, um, but I've seen very badly written Java. Um, when you start getting into the older things like um, enterprise Java beans and using the big servers like uh, WebH Solutions, all that stuff, it's really ugly. Um, and uh, Python simplifies a lot of that. Um, and with machine learning now, it's just client code and then it moves on to your server um, in the cloud, whatever solution provider, use Google, Amazon, or whatever. Um, but that's the future, and that's where it's going. And a lot of it's by choice, is, is in Python. There is, I, I've seen Rust come out, but I've seen a lot of other languages come and go and go through this list. Good examples are um, Objective C, uh, Swift was up there for a while, but it's it's dropping off. Look, it's it's double Chevron down. 16, there's a lot of excitement with Swift, which was the Apple, well, open source Apple language for uh, for um, for uh, all the iOS devices like iPhone and iPad. But because Apple is dropping off and all their products are very expensive, people have lost interest in developing apps. So, I mean, you look at Lee, you still Perl up there. That's an old legacy language. And same with MATLAB. These things are growing still. And <coughs> Hanging on. I mean, look, Assembler is up there still, too. Uh, it's just mind-boggling. So um, you can definitely see which are the growing languages, even though uh, they're not as much. But then when you get into the newer languages like Go, it's kind of there, but not going anywhere. Uh, Swift, that's a mobile language. Like here, Here's some ones. So you got C has a, has a big growth and Java. Um, and, and look at all these other languages here. And, and, and you look for Scala, that was supposed to be a hot language. And, and Rust up here, 37. I mean, these I don't know what these languages got to do to get in the top 10 even. And they don't even get real tr attraction in terms of community development uh, until they hit the top five, I think. Hey, Brian, I'm happy with the quality of this intro and the quality of the material and topics. Of another meeting. Thanks. Later. No problem. We we can we can end this now. Um, anybody else got any questions? Thanks for joining, uh, Colin. We'll uh, talk to you soon and uh, take advantage of that chat as well. I think yeah, you're on it. Yeah. So anybody else got any questions? I think we're up to five people. If anybody new out there, um, in the um, the video there, you'll see if you're new, quantlabs.net slash book. Um, that will give you two PDFs for free. Uh, when you sign up, and, and that will walk you through why crypto and the benefits of crypto. And that was last year. This year is a totally different animal. I'm not saying that Bitcoin will come back in a vicious way. I don't think Bitcoin will come back at all. But when you look at all the alternative cryptos I've shown, you know, uh, earlier where certain uh, coins were up five times faster than Bitcoin itself. So don't let... The naysayers say Bitcoin's dead. Bitcoin is dead. Um, but there's some other coins that are moving much faster and growing, even though when Bitcoin dies out. Um, so there's a lot of legitimacy behind these other generations of, of other coins. Um, namely, when you look at the uh, uh, crypto compare uh, of the cryptocurrencies of the top 100, let's say, the volumes are serious. Like XRP's up there, Ethereum's up there. Um, I mean, Bitcoin's still the granddaddy of them all. But in terms of growth and performance, these two are doing pretty good. Litecoin's usually the big one. Bitcoin Cash has been doing well as well. So those are your big ones. And they're having better performance. And they're multiples, like, uh, big, much higher than you'll get with... Uh, uh, traditional big six of the Forex pairs. So um, that's what I think. When taking your course, do you offer help in dis discussions? Yeah. Um, right now, we're doing one right now. So I, I traditionally did these once a week. Um, the reason I stopped was because I was teaching in the live course. So now I'm back for public help. And then I've, obviously I've got the, um, the chat as well for people to reach out privately. As I say, you can talk about anything you want in the chat. Um, it's not, it's not, tr it's not tracked at all. Um, when taking your course, do you offer help in discussions? Yeah. So offer, uh, offer that as well. 
TA hours. I'm not. I'm not like that. I I do this because I love it. I like I like helping people. Um, so yeah, and I'm trying to work on a community of people that want to get in on this and and help others and help you know what I do as well. But it's all private um, because one of the things is once you publicize a, a bot like this, uh, as mentioned earlier, it loses its effectiveness. So the fewer people that know about it, the better. And that's why kind of if you saw the price, I jacked it up roughly five times this morning um, because it can do that. You know that there's a lot of interest now in this thing because of the performance especially that it was up almost 29.5 percent yesterday over 24 hours on top of stuff as well as the uh where it's at now 14 percent and we still got another five hour no uh four hours to go i'm hope i don't i was hoping it was going to hit 20 percent i'd be happy if it hits 15 percent today uh for the performance on total returns today um so imagine if you had a hundred grand and you wanted to deploy a hundred thousand dollars yesterday, you would be up twenty nine and a half thousand dollars in twenty four hours. No, no, no wealth manager gets performance like that. No financial advisor gives you that. Um, to me, I think it's luck. But at the other end of it, uh, a lot of it's due to the fact that the cryptocurrency space is coming back and it's coming back with a vengeance. And there's a lot of reasons for it. As I said where it's bouncing back now is because of JP Morgan announcing that coin that they're putting out that started it. You'll get a lot more um, news of the SEC uh, putting out uh, ETFs and getting that legitimate. I know NASDAQ's working on one and a lot of the big uh, exchanges are doing that. The volume is going to start pouring into this thing as the markets come off in the mainstream, uh, which they will. <clears throat> Crypto will, will, blow, will, will explode because of that. Um, as I said, it might not be in Bitcoin, it may be Ethereum, it may be XRP, it could be EOS, um, Litecoin's been moving, Bitcoin Cash has been on fire, uh, Tron's coming out of nowhere. Uh, another one I'm seeing is, uh, uh, well, you see BNB there, Binance Coin's up there, Bitcoin SV's up there, but I don't see Cardano, I see the odd Monero, Zcash, Dash, that's doing, Neo's doing good. There's a lot of these, and they're doing really well, and uh, that's what I've been seeing. And um, when one, if the whole market's down uh, in crypto, what I'm finding, there's going to be two or three that are doing well, and you can always make money. Like if you looked at the performance of my uh, track record, a 2% two, 2 move for the day is, is small now, um, but I think it's good. Uh, another question came in. Uh, nobody has a crystal ball. How long will this bull market continue? I can't say it will be, last forever, but let me put it this way. When you look at, there's a lot of things happening right now in the world, especially in the West. Big, The big thing right now that's happening is national debt for governments. Okay, So here where I'm in Canada, I can pretty well guarantee you they're raising tax like crazy. Why? because they're running out of money. They're not able to provide services that a lot of citizens are expecting. Same in the States, same in Western Europe and the UK as well. So every, they're relying on tax. People are getting sick of paying tax. So this is where crypto comes in as a utility, where people are going to start saying, you know what, I don't wanna pay tax, but I still wanna transact in crypto. So the utility of crypto will build because of that, because of, I won't say tax evasion, but just builds the use of crypto. And there's different countries. Right now, the, vol the huge volumes are coming out of Asia. <clears throat> I think they'll still continue. But there'll also be big volumes coming out of the West as people start to realize that the crypto will give you uh, more mainstream access to uh, the utility of building crypto. And I've just noticed, as I said, that once... JP Morgan last week said we're going in with our own coin. The market started to take off, and I'm not seeing these swings in the market. So I think it's just starting to build. Um, is there a base minimum? Uh, I think I answered that, Al. With Binance, there is no minimum. There is no minimum. You could start with ten bucks, twenty bucks. I started this thing with twenty bucks, and that's why you get tiny profits right now, but I'm going to be putting a couple hundred bucks in and I'm going to get more serious and add more to it as, as the confidence is building with this thing. But Canadian have great health care. What if, what I've heard? Well, I'm not going to get into the politics of Canada, but don't, 
do not, do not believe what you hear. I'm giving you first-hand knowledge as a Canadian. Um, there's, there's a lot of big problems in Canada. Uh, we have something called hallway health care. I can show it to you if you want. Um, what they do is they basically line people up in hallways of, of hospitals. So they don't have enough staff uh, to handle it. And people are sitting in these beds for, uh, see right here, Ontario. And they sit in these beds for five days before they get looked up by a doctor. It's ridiculous. Don't believe what you read <laughs> about the healthcare. Here. There's a lot of breaking things. And yeah, you, you, it works in the States because the medical is private. You're going to pay $6 for a freaking Tylenol. I thought maybe we can clear the VIX to determine the best days to trade. No. Crypto is very, very independent of the mainstream markets. There is sometimes safety havens like a few years ago where Bitcoin was looked upon as a safety haven. Yeah, I'm in Toronto myself. It's the biggest city here in Canada. So don't believe what you read um, about the healthcare system here. Uh, do you have any meeting locally in Toronto? Yeah, actually, uh, as I said, the next online event will be in two weeks. Uh, here I have a meetup. Uh, I've not taken advantage of yet, but if you go to meetup.com, uh, quant-finance, that's my group. So we do meet every couple of weeks. Uh, well, sorry, once a month, but I haven't met since December, but I'll be putting one together next week, next Monday. So that is local <clears throat> in Toronto at seven o'clock and we can go till when they close the bar basically. <laughs> or as long as I'm still standing. I, I'm, I don't drink anymore, but I've had my moments there in the past. <clears throat> Any other questions? So you see, it's been about 10 years, so 256 events. So does crypto trade all the time? No open, no close. Um, yeah, so right now, um, I think I, the only asset class I, I'm interested right now in trading is crypto. Um, because of, of the potential that I've been showing, I don't think this will die. I think it's going to explode, as I said. Um, and I do have the potential to do a Forex strategy, very similar. But why? Why tie up money? Um, to get tiny returns because uh, I don't want to use leverage. So I'm all in with the crypto. So that's why. Um, hopefully I'll help you out understanding that. So, yeah, if you got any other questions. Anything at all? So we're coming up to 8 o'clock and usually... An hour, it's about an hour. We did one. I think our longest video of the last six weeks in the course was the last one. It was nearly two hours. And there was another one an hour and a half. But um, it's about an hour. What's your total percent return? Um, total percent return? I can show you the track record. As I started out, there's a track record. Uh, a new section on the website here called Track Record. Um, let me see if I have, I haven't downloaded the latest one on this system that you're looking at. Let me see here if I can show you that. Um, let's see here. Okay. P and L. Okay. So when you go in here, you will watch that video to understand how this thing will work. I'm going to give you a nutshell. So you got 10 days worth of, uh, uh, packages you can download the package will contain the following so this was downloaded the 23rd so it's two days old but there's one from last night and there'll be one five minutes to midnight when it gets processed so just after midnight tonight for today um, so here is the PL. we just started this up like two weeks ago um, so let me show you how this works okay um, yeah, I'll get to your question now. So here's the 21st right here. So these are the typical returns that we get right here. Uh, this right here, this column is the win ratio, 88% wins, profitable trades. This is all technical analysis, 2.3 daily return for that day on the 21st. In terms of uh, the 
track record. This is early data, so it's not going to really be legitimate for anything, really, if you ask me. But uh, this is a typical term sheet that you would look at, investors would look at and gauge. Includes a uh, sharp compound and annual growth rate, uh, year to date, and this is only a few weeks, if that. Um, and then the average stats, the descriptive stats, month up and down, monthly returns. So it's kind of early days right now. Oh, and also includes the, the equity curve as well. This guy right here. So you can get that every day after midnight for the previous day. So you can see it's taken off. So it's doing quite well. Uh, it's been pretty exciting to see this. But yesterday it was 29.5% daily return. But the average has been, last time I tracked it was at 8% per day, which is pretty heavy. Um, I'm a novice trader. Where should I start? See, that's a hard question because uh, it depends what you want to trade and what your goals are, what your risk profile is going to look like. If you want... Hmm, and if you want to do automation, um, I could say, watch me, because I'm important. I'm not like that. <laughs> but um, what I would recommend, ooh, that's tough. Let me, well, be more specific if you can in your questioning. Uh, I go, if you are already for technical analysis, hmm, or what asset class do you want to learn is the other question. You just type them up and let me know. Oh, so a, I'll ask the 88 wins of 100 trades. That's correct. So the average profitable trades they get out of 100 as a percentage is between 85 to 90% win ratio, profitable trades. So you can write code. I have people that write code in Visual Basic for Excel. You can be a little more specific with the coding uh, languages that you do, the programming languages. Colin asks, have you crashed in any gains does the course cover how to cash in gains maybe uh an obvious simple question no that's 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 basically a combination of risk management risk uh money management portfolio optimization i'll show you a uh a, um a posting i put up on my blog a few days ago let me see if i can find it if you go under the blog uh right here I'll show you, this is to answer your specific question, um, Colin, because this is an important uh, article, depending upon your knowledge. So in here, um, I put out a question to somebody regarding uh, portfolio optimization. I wanted to confirm what I'm doing is correct. So what he came back was, was all the other different techniques that you can use for portfolio optimization right here. So if you look for this article, New Portfolio Optimization Techniques, this one right here, um, this is what I learned a few days ago. So we have three new methods to understand about portfolio optimization to enhance your returns, uh, optimize your position weighting and sizing. So this is kind of covered as part of that. Um, so uh, to cover that, and what this will do is it will analyze market potential and how you should do your position sizing for for expected returns for whatever time period you're looking at so that's another world in trading you have to understand but does my course cover that not really because i want to get people up and running so i kind of take out all the extraneous stuff such as this so i don't cover it but i do have it in another part of my website but it's something uh, not cheap. We'll put it that way. It's not cheap at all. <laughs> um, so let me just catch up here. Uh, okay, so I can write code. Uh, Colin asks, clarification: Have you sold coins and placed in your bank account? That's a really good question. Not yet, and I don't do that yet because um, understand when you take money out of uh, Binance and you transfer it to a bank account here in Canada, that's what they call a taxable event. So that means that I'm now starting to declare income. I'm From a very high level um, perspective, I'm using this account, this trading to build wealth. This is my retirement um, account. So if you're in the US and you have your 401k, 
It's like building up your 401k and then taking out money out of your 401k, which is not recommended. And I treat this trading in this account the same way. It's for my retirement. Um, so I'm not going to worry about it. I trust Binance. Um, they want to be legit, so I don't think they're going to go anywhere. They're not going to steal my money. I don't think they would. And, and, and the amounts I'm talking are very tiny right now, so it's not high-risk stuff. But as the account builds, um, you know, it's something I have to be concerned about. But to answer your specific question, no, I don't take money out because I don't want to get killed on it on the tax. Um, but from what I've seen, it's not hard to take out money. I have tested it. If they're very quick in getting your transfer onto the blockchain. Once your account, or sorry, your transfer is put on the blockchain from the exchange, you're good as gold because the blockchain is going to guarantee you're going to get your money back or the transfer will complete <coughs> because it's now put on the blockchain. So I don't worry about that. It takes obviously a couple of hours if it's Bitcoin. Um, but as things progress, it'll be a lot more instant. Uh, maybe you should Google an intro on trading, answer the stock market, then something Bitcoin. Uh, okay, so that was a question, I think, related to Al. So you want me to do a Google search on um, on uh, trading? I can do that. Just give me a second here. So let's say stock trading, uh, learn stock trading. There's, there's a lot of courses out there. Um, and to be honest, a lot of them, let's put, let's put it this way. If you're going to choose a trading course or a guru, um, there's all these different options. We'll just leave it at that. One of the things I think you really need to look for is something like what I put up on my website. Okay. I put the track record up there. I do it daily and it's automated. Okay. I do that for a reason. And that's the sort of thing I use to, to set standards. So that's something I would look for, um, but if you want to know how to um, gauge, uh, to gauge, uh, there's a, uh, uh, let's see here, uh, I can't remember. So let's say uh, Warrior Trading is okay. They're, they're pretty good, but uh, if you go in under review, there's a really good website, um, Trustpilot, uh, but these are very expensive programs. Okay, just trying to find the uh, school. There, there's a website that does a pretty good job on reviewing. Um, but in terms of uh, where to learn, I would probably just do a standard, uh, what's that, those MOOCs, those free courses. Um, geez, I don't know. Let me think here. Like, let's say Coursera. Learn to trade. I don't know. Learn to trade. Uh, something like that. Trading courses, popular ones, well reviewed. Um, there's lots of resources out there, but it just kind of helps to be more specific because it's a very general question. But lots of different um, courses to go from. I don't know if that can help out uh, Al. Uh, Colin, clarify, have you sold coins? So I've answered that question with the bank account. You mentioned candlesticks, D marks, indicators, PE. Where should I start learning about the technical analysis? Okay, for you, let's say, let's just say you want to focus on entries, market entries. That's it. As I said, there's a great, great website, and it's all candles, candlesticks. It's candles can work. Okay, as I said, there's this thing called the pattern site. Let me do a better way to search this. So say you put in the pattern site and you want to look for a particular pattern for a candle. Just, uh, I don't know, uh, Ham Ham Hamira, is that? I can't, I can't never remember the name. The pattern site, Harima. I can't, it's all Japanese names. Uh, there we go. The, this is the pattern index. So you want a place to start, very good book. Uh, and it will show you the best bullish candles, the best bearish candles. Very good website. Again, it's called thepatternsite.com. If you want to know about technical analysis, this is a very good site. From a programming um, point, uh, just do a search for uh, GitHub, um, TA Lib. 
for just general technical analysis indicators, open source. Um, let me think here. If, I don't know which. Yeah, right here. So it's 150 indicators. So, you know, you can go through here and play around with these uh, coding examples they provide. Um, to understand about technical analysis, this is the, the one I like, and that's the standard too. So that might help you out. Um, so hopefully I'll answer your question, uh, Al, about um, those two, about candles and technical analysis. Sharp ratio. So you want to learn about sharp ratio. As I mentioned about portfolio analysis, that's where you'll learn it. Um, another good place to learn overall, just very high level, but it's actually in plain English, um, is Investopedia. So if you go into Investopedia to learn about, let's say, sharp ratio, um, that's that's pretty good. You'll you'll easily pick up definitions through that through something like Investopedia, which explains it with pretty good examples um, how it works as a standard for ratio for measuring uh, trading strategies. Uh, which API are you using to get in the streaming market data? As I mentioned, Nick, welcome Nick. Uh, earlier, I would recommend CCXT. All you have to do is just do a search on CCXT, or let's say GitHub, CCXT. That's a great wrapper for anything to do with crypto for 130 uh, pairs. Sorry, 130 uh, exchanges. And you it includes the big ones, uh, namely Binance. That's the big one. Um, I, I they, They're adding so many exchanges. This thing's pretty crazy. Hundreds. Like, like so many exchanges that it supports. It's a great project. Again, it's called uh, CCXT on GitHub. That's probably a good place to go. Um, let's see here. Okay, and, and you also get uh, Python with that too. If you're trading crypto, do you pay in crypto or dollars? Depends how you transfer the account. There's an app that I use called uh, CoinNami. CoinNami. Let me just show you that. And it's an app. It's Android, iOS. This is what I use. So what I would do in Canada, we have, or in Toronto, we have these ATMs where you can put your cash, your fiat cash, in my case, the Canadian dollar or whatever it is, $20, like I said, put it into an ATM, spits out this QR code, which is like a barcode. Then you scan it with this Coinami, which is the wallet. And then from there, you can transfer that QR code onto your Binance exchange very fast and it's everything I've seen there's no fees I trust it works and there's no third party it's just me and the blockchain back to um, Binance but things have changed now on the Binance front because you have to apply and identify yourself through uh, Binance for the KYC thanks you guys rock no problem man um, hopefully this stuff will help you out so I'll, I'll be doing this again uh, Colin asks, you will have to use cash to buy Bitcoin. That's right. So as I said, you do it through an ATM, a bank ATM. And Brian will teach you, teach us how to trade using a bot in Bitcoin. Then you will have to sell your coins to get cash out. Yeah, it's kind of like that, but it depends how you, what your goals are in your investing. As I said, I'm using the, the, big, the crypto for, for, for retirement. And I'm building it and let it build and let it rock and roll on its own and get the kind of returns I'm getting. I'm not going to lie to you. Um, yes, this video is saved. It's on, it's on, um, it, it is on YouTube. So, um, it will take time for it to render once it finishes, give it an hour, depending upon the length of the video. And I'll be up on my YouTube channel as normal. Uh, so it will be there. That's why I do the streams on both either Facebook or YouTube for that. So it will be available. I'll turn it into a podcast as well for those that, uh, do the audio only, which is pretty popular. Any other questions, you guys? This uh, hour and a quarter, it's no problem. Um, anybody else got questions? I don't mind hanging around. I guess I'll do this again on Tuesday in a couple of weeks. Was trying to answer Al. Oh, no problem, man. Uh, as a group, this is what we do um, on, the, on the private chat. So if you're already a member of anything, just get on there and um, answer away. It might be somebody that might be much more qualified than myself to answer. We got some pretty heavy hitters on that thing but again i'm not here to uh brag about it <laughs> but it's it's anonymous that's the nice thing about it is that people can be themselves 
and not worry about the uh, IRS or the, in my case, my tax authority watching. Because they are. They're going to start controlling the access points for crypto because they know people are going to start using crypto for uh, cash. And it's the future of money. As I said earlier, the utility of crypto. Anybody else got any questions, comments, uh, anything you want? You know, even talked about my wonderful healthcare system here in Canada or Ontario, Canada, <laughs> or in Toronto specifically. You don't want to be here on the roads either. They're really bad. Potholes are as big as elephants. That they, they don't destroy cars. There's one that over a railway destroyed the suspension of a car. It was in the news about a week ago. That's how bad it is. <laughs> Um, anybody else got any questions? If not, I can tear down this uh, stream. As I said, I'll be up on uh, YouTube once it renders. Get half an hour, I'm going to estimate. Um, but it'll be up there. And I'll put it on my blog as well. I'll probably, up, if you're not on my email list, I'll probably put this and blast it out tomorrow morning on my, uh, on my email list. Anybody else got any questions? I can wait for about 20 seconds. I got 8.14 in my time right now. Go Leafs. <laughs> yeah, go Leafs. 1963 was the last time they won a Stanley Cup. <laughs> yeah. I'm a Montreal fan because at least they kind of win a little more frequently. <laughs> Colin, I live in Toronto. We have a, pup, a pitch lake and our potholes are probably bigger than yours. Probably, but hey, I mean, you're an emerging market. Toronto, Canada's supposed to be a first world, you know. <laughs> Greetings from Greece. How you doing? Uh, I can never say Greek names. I don't want to butcher it. Sivator, Dard, Gips. I got a lot, quite a few friends that are Greek. But that one, Pasifator, Dorpsky. <laughs> Hails from Greece. Hails from Toronto. I tell you, I love Greek food, man. We got some great, we have a Danforth in Toronto. Look that up. Google it. It's awesome. Greek food is awesome. Well, my school, we had half our school was Greek. And uh, somebody that kind of got me advanced was Greek too. Very intelligent guy he was. Um, any other questions? Uh just so you know, we're gonna. I'm, I'm hoping to get Bob Pardo again. He wants to do a demo of a software Ranger. It's not a Greek name, okay? <laughs> it's a Rus it's a East. I don't want to say Russian, but I'm always gonna insult somebody who's from Eastern Europe and not Russian. <laughs> Opa, yeah, break some plates. Opa, you know, you know, Greek wedding was filmed in Toronto. Just so you know. Opa, <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. Yeah, Greek, Greek, my, my fat, was it my, my fat Greek wedding, or what's called that movie years ago? That was Toronto film, man. Along the Danforth, all that. Brian, this discussion has been very useful. No problem, Colin. That's why I do this. <laughs> I learned stuff from it too, man. Don't you worry. Um, we, we could do it again, and uh, again and again and again. I love doing this. This is why, because you have a good time on it. <laughs> Next time I'll involve alcohol. <laughs> uh, I don't know if you see my Facebook coding drunk. <laughs> uh, anybody else got any questions? I said that three minutes ago, but uh, this is hilarious. Thanks to everybody who's on here has joined over the last few weeks. This has been an amazing experience for me. Thank you, Al. No problem. Uh, wherever I can help you, let me know. You, I, you got my email. That's <laughs> the emoticon. At least, as long as I'm not getting the poopy ones <laughs> from Microsoft. <laughs> oh, we got another one. Eh? Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> well, yes, we do have a sense of humor around here. Um, 8.17. I'll give it another minute. How about that? Any, anybody got a comment or a question? Oh, let me check on the bot. <laughs> Let's see how it's doing. <laughs> this is not the brag or anything, but... Uh, uh, hang on here. I'm just bringing up my little system here. Uh, so right now, the last time I reported is 14.02%. Uh, ah, 14.67%. So it's gone up about a percent since we started the stream. 
one shot every time someone mentions crypto. Yeah. <laughs> we should be doing every percentage that we this thing grows as the stream continues. <laughs> but I hope it. Uh, well, it may. It looks like it's going to break fifteen percent. But if it, I'd be happy if it can break twenty percent tonight by midnight my time, that would be awesome. I'd be excited, but I didn't think it could do 29.5 yesterday. But 20% I'll take. <laughs> uh, between if it even even between today and yesterday, right now it's a, uh, my math serves me about 45%. Brian bragging about his bot. Yeah, I'm, well, I'll, I'll brag about the bot, but not the butt. <laughs> I'll lose my YouTube channel as a result. <laughs> mm. Oh, it's 18, 19. I've been only going on about six minutes. Anybody got a question or a comment? <laughs> Anybody? <laughs> if not, okay. Should I go bragging again? Oh, we just added 0.89, 14.89. Sorry. <laughs> We're only 0.11 from 15%. Ah, it's got another position. Uh, B S V B T C. How's it gonna do? Oh, I got another position on too. L T C Ethereum. <laughs> Soon I'll get there. I want you to get there. Uh, this has been. I will admit, this has been an absolute hilarious ride. Um, doing these streams, and I've had one percent. We'll see how it does. I have to say, the positions stay on for about. A couple of minutes on average, up to 10 minutes. This depends on the markets, but let me just check on the uh, big five here. Uh, yeah, here. Yeah, they're all positive again. All the big five are positive. Not much, but Bitcoin Cash is back up at 0.72. It's very volatile. I will say it's been up and down in the last hour. Pretty crazy. So the bot buys the security and sells it when a trigger happens. Um, yes, it buys a pair, as I call them, a security, the same thing, and sells when a trigger happens. Yes, it's just simple entries and exits. As I said, the entry is the, um, the candles that I talked about the, in the pattern site, dot com. And then you can use different indicators to close out your position or exit the position. Depends upon how you want to do it, which indicators you want to use. So, um, so it's not by time, but by price. Yeah, it's based upon the technical analysis of the price. And it's just only using the price. There's no other fundamentals or anything that's using that. And as I said, we uh, this bot will stay away from anything that's volatile. Not with no VIX related, as somebody mentioned earlier. So mm -hmm. it, it only takes the stable coins. Um, and they're usually driven by volume uh, as well. From, that's from a simplistic standpoint. Colin asks, I have lots of questions about your bot, but time next time, no pun intended. Like timing, frequency, determination, on entry and exit, not asking for code, but strategy. That's what I talk about over all those videos I did over the last six weeks. This is exactly what I covered, but it spanned out over close to two months. So obviously you can't do it in an hour. Yes, you have a written algorithm. I had two people wanting to share their algorithm even and whatnot but yeah i mean the, the entire process to get where this is that's about two years so it's been a lot of blood blood sweat and tears to get it to where it's at but i'm going to be honest with you it is luck 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 uh to get it to this point because it's based upon market conditions and the market conditions right now are awesome because like an hour ago everything was up a good chunk of them were over two percent and it went down and now it's coming back again with a vengeance so uh, it's it's really good. The market conditions are really good once you build things. Momentum's a big one, a big factor. As I said, volume and momentum are your two friends. As hard as that may sound, but come back in a couple of weeks. Um, we'll continue the conversation. Any other questions at all? I got eight twenty three, and I'll be another ten minutes before I close it out. I bet. Because I know there's a 30 second delay between me moving my mouth like this, nothing coming out. 
Maybe I should shut it down at 825. Maybe. I don't know. You tell me. You guys have been a great group tonight. I appreciate it. Thanks for being here, too. No, thank you, Colin. Thank you, Al. And I think we had Gil. Gil was a queen. And then we had uh, our Greek friend. I can never, I don't want to embarrass myself. Oh, and Nick as well. Yes. Who's going through him? And who had the balls to type something? Yeah, quite good. 823 still. Any other questions at all? Hmm, no, I guess not. So keep your eyes on the uh, Facebook page, Quant Labs Net. Uh, I'm starting to post more on Instagram, on Quant Labs Net, the handle, I guess. Um, and I'm just reporting the bot results. That's all people care about. It's like Tim Sykes and his stupid uh, Lamborghinis. That's all people care about. Not not what I ate or what I built. <laughs> Oh, Frank, how you doing? Thanks again. No problem. I hope you enjoyed our uh, wonderful humor here. <laughs> uh, 8.24. Hey, Frank, you got a question? Type it up, please. <laughs> or anybody. I'm hanging out here, man. Just waiting for anybody who's got anything to ask about. Anybody, go ahead. Make my day. Hmm? No? Okay. Why don't we give her a wrap because I'll be here forever otherwise. Okay, guys, thanks a lot. If you're wherever you are, day, night, good day, good evening, and all that. You recommend a warrior trading too, right? That's right, Al. Expensive, but uh, out of all the gurus I've seen, he's the most popular and he's kind of credible um, for stocks. But, yeah, get in the world of crypto, dude. He'll do much better. Much, much better. There's lots of bots out there. I don't know what your budget is, but because um, you're, you're watching as a human, right? Here, everything's all algorithmic. It's all automated. That's the benefit of it. It's another question. If you don't have hookers next to you, then you are not profitable. This is true. That's true. The pimp and hoe lifestyle, but I don't live that lifestyle. I'm Mr. Clean. That's why I have like one-tenth or one-one-hundredth of what Sykes has got and all our other guru friends. I don't do the beach lifestyle. I just sit here in the screen. <laughs> um, anybody? Questions? 826. Anybody? Type her up, please. No? Maybe? Oh, haha. Yes, ha. LOL. Uh, anybody, anybody. Okay, you know what? I'm gonna tear it down. It's already eight thirty. So as I said, be be on the lookout for uh, next uh, not next week, the week after, two weeks tonight, seven p.m. But I gotta say, guys, this is a hilarious one tonight. Hopefully, you got learned some stuff tonight, uh, and then this video will be put up on my YouTube channel and it'll be rendered. Uh, thanks again, and uh, we shall talk to you soon. I guess. Have a good night, and may you do all right. Okay, guys, I'll uh, talk to you later, I guess. Soyanara, Auf Wiedersehen, Tush, Au revoir. That's all I know. Soyanara, bye. See ya.